So I've been very carefully trying to loosen these little screws without damaging the electromagnets. And so far it's working, but I just have to go really careful. Um, I'm not sure if I would ever be able to find uh, new ones of these. Um, so we'll just take our time, go nice and slow, and see if we can salvage this. I don't think um, I don't think they're damaged. I don't think they're wore out. I mean the the wires are no good, but we'll get those switched out and. Okay, so we got the other back half of the brake, the the, uh, the brake assembly cleaned up. I did a bit of sandblasting in here. This is all pretty delicate stuff. These little brass guide plates hold the electromagnetics and they kind of let them float. And I didn't want to, I tried to take a couple of these apart and they were so corroded and tight in there that I felt, you know, let's not wreck something because we're gonna to try to get that apart. So, so I just sandblasted this a bit and here's the other side of it. So normally there would be um, these big springs are pushing up and when the ele electromagnetic turns on, of course these guys are all in there. When the ele electromagnetic turns on, it pulls down. So this is constantly being forced up by these springs and it, when the electromagnetic turns on, it pulls this down and then of course it releases all of the pressure on these, on these brake discs and that's what allows the, that's what allows the, uh, I think this goes this way. That's what allows this guy to then rotate when the electric motor turns on. So, so now we got this guy cleaned up and I think what I'll do is just give this a light dusting. Uh, of course, I'll tape off my bearing surfaces and because majority of this you're, you're going to see in certain angles. Um, I don't think it was painted before. I don't think the paint is going to harm anything if it's just a light coat. This, uh, this looks pretty good and I don't think it's going to take away from any of the electromagnetic conductivity that's required. This is the this is the back side. There's another bearing fit here. What I will do is I will remove this grease zerk. I'll take this grease zerk out because the new bearing that I got, I couldn't get a greasable bearing with a um, with a uh, factory access ring or grease port. So this is just going to have to be a sealed bearing that goes in there. And so I'll just remove this. I don't want someone to accidentally grease it just because there's a grease nipple there. So we'll remove that. Okay, I got this primed and painted. I left the bearing surface and in, I believe on that side is a seal surface. And I left this mating surface where the electric motors uh, one end, I think the stator goes to this end. And now on this side where the electromagnets go, these had, have these little brass keepers. And they, uh, it just seemed, they seemed too delicate to try to get these bolts out. So I sandblasted it and taped these, got, taped these guys off, painted it up, and now I can put the electromagnets back in, do the wiring harness, and then this portion is ready. So that turned out nice. So this kind of freaks me out, but I'm hoping that this all works. I 
I know these look rough, but I think we're gonna, I think it's gonna be okay. Judging by the other ones that worked on the steering, these don't look that, that bad. And I mean, we'll find out here right away if they're <laughs> operational, but I, I haven't even looked into seeing if you could get these. I don't really know what they are as far as maybe they're common. So, okay, so I've started rewiring this little guy. So on this one, this is the original wiring harness, this black guy here. So he goes from the first lead jumps to the second one, skips this third one, ties into the fourth one, ties into the fifth one. So he's energizing four out of the six. What I noticed when I started taking it apart is that they had, it looks like they had just stripped off one side, folded it in half, slid it up inside here, crimped it so the wire just came up into there, stripped, and here's the excess, and then went back down to the next, to the next, and then finally finishing off with one connection. So I did find these, these little uh, crimp terminals and they just fit. So I did an experiment and I actually tried doing the, the fold. So I'll show you here, I'm kind of halfway through. So I just stripped with these guys. These guys are great. They just, this one is supposed to bite with more teeth. And then this guy comes along and he's supposed to pull the end off. But, um, so I've already done that in the middle of the, I've already done that in the middle of the uh, line. And now, now, so this hasn't been cut, so we'll fold it in half. And then I just used some pliers here and I squished it. I had a, I had done some soldering thinking that that was what I was supposed to do when I was working on the some of the stuff to do with the rectifier and one of the viewers had said that you shouldn't solder automotive connections because they they break easier because they don't like the vibration now um, I'm sure there's all sorts of pros and cons and situations and I'm sure uh, there's all sorts of reasons to do stuff. I'm probably doing lots of things wrong, but anyways, I think that looks nice and neat and tidy. That goes up in there like that. It just fits. And now I'll give her the old crimperoo. I've been crimping them twice. So that looks pretty good. Nice and strong. So that guy goes to the third guy. Sorry, to the uh, one, two, three, to the fourth terminal. And then he, then, oh, oh, this one here. Then he goes to the single. What's going on here? Some kind of fiberglass. It's 
probably asbestos. This looks like an awfully itchy zip tie. Ugh. So he goes, he goes right to this one. This one here, uh, it was one of the loose ones. There's a part of me that thinks I should probably either tape this or epoxy this or do something. He's still connected, but he's not being secured by whatever this kind of fabric wrap combo they got going on here. I'm sure I could probably wrap it with vinyl tape or black electrician's tape, but we'll, we'll look into that. Anyways, so yeah, I have a, uh, I meant to bring it out. I have a wiring diagram of this and I'm not quite sure why, but um, it looks like these four are connected and then there's another four that are connected. And then there's two more that are connected from a third wire. Now, I believe this is all three phase um, or it's single phase that's been branched off of one of the three phases. Um, anyways, I'm just following what was here and from what was here and what is on the drawings show that they're the same. So that kind of gives me confidence that I can refurbish this wire to what was here because it matches what was on those drawings. So hopefully there's no funny business, but it's coming along. Okay, we are almost done the wiring. One more connection to go and it turned out pretty good. So I have a little bit better understanding of the, the symmetry at least. So there's three wires that come here, a, a red, a yellow, and a black. And um, they all, each, each color does four connections to make up the, the 12 terminals. So let's see if we can, you know what, let's do this. So here's the three, three colors. So black comes in here, goes to the next, skips one, ties in here, ties in there. Then yellow comes in, goes to this one, and this one skips one, goes in here and terminates there. And then red, again, comes in here, goes to this one, this one skips over and catches these last two here. So anyways, I think it turned out pretty good. I think I'll maybe get some loom get some loom and, and maybe uh, maybe put it between here. There was nothing before, but just maybe see if I can clean it up a little bit. But these all look good now. I did put some tape on this to hold this wiggly, wiggly one. It seems a lot better now. But yeah, I think it looks pretty good. These guys can still have a bit of movement and do their magic magnet. Anyways, thanks again for joining me and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye for now.